Hi, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRschool.com. Today I want to show you the Turbo 200, some of the features of it, and how it's installed. The first thing to know about the Turbo 200 is that it's actually multiple capacitors in one, but all made out of a single winding. It's a very durable design. It's a permanent installation. Some people have said that they thought it was only a temporary installation. It is absolutely an industrial grade permanent capacitor solution for run capacitors in residential and light commercial applications. I'll talk to you quickly about what makes the Turbo 200 by American Radionics. A lot of you know them as AMRAD Engineering, but it's also American Radionics, a division. You can see AMRAD Engineering is a division of the American Radi Radionics Corp. And uh, one nice thing about AMRAD is they put a lot of this information right on the box so you can find out a lot about their company just by looking at the box. One thing is they have many, many patents. A lot of what they make is patented in the U.S. It's uh, specifically theirs. You see all these different patent numbers. They've done a lot of research and development to make uh, some of the really unique uh, American-made products. The UL list all their products. They test them with UL. They have all brass plated terminals, so their terminals won't rust. A lot of you have probably noticed some terminals rust over time, theirs won't. You'll notice that all of their capacitors are rated for both 370 or 440 volts, which means that they're 440 volts, but they work with either, and so they're gonna be okay with higher voltages that may occasionally may run into. Another thing that you're gonna notice is that they have a support number that you can call eight to five, and then after hours and weekends, that number right there is actually one of the founders of the business, one of the family members uh, of the founding family. And so you're actually gonna get one of the founders if, if you need to on the weekends if you have a question about the product. The product has a five-year, no questions asked, unconditional warranty, which I would be shocked if you ever have to use because the thing's so well made. They've been in business since 1939, and these are all made right here in the U.S. in Palm Coast, Florida. So those are some things about it that make this product really unique. There's no other product like it in that regard. There are other products that are made in the USA, but they're really more so assembled in the USA, whereas these are actually made right here. These windings that come out of these capacitors are actually wound right on a machine there in the factory uh, that I visited in Palm Coast. So for maximum life expectancy, mount in the upright position with the terminals on top. To ensure the best distribution of power, attach one wire from the compressor to the terminal with the highest microfarads used. So sort of the basis of these capacitors and how they work is that you're connecting in multiple windings. If you look in here, there's, there's multiple segments inside this capacitor and you're connecting them together in order to get exactly what you're looking to get from a microfarad standpoint. That's, what, that's the universal part of these capacitors that makes them so so time-saving and so versatile. First thing I wanna say about the versatility though, because a lot of people, I, I've had a lot of technicians say this, they're like, well, you know, yeah, sure it saves time, but, uh, but do I wanna make the additional investment? Buy it because it's a great product made in America that's better than anything else out there. And then the extra benefit is that it's gonna save you a whole bunch of time and money. One thing to, to see here that I really like about these is they've actually got the factory measurements. So these are, the, these are the measurements that they took of this particular capacitor for every single capacitor inside of here. When you make a capacitor, it's never exactly 30, it's never exactly you know, 25, 10, whatever. So it's gonna, it shows you here exactly what each capacitor in here is rated at. So the 25 is 25.502, and then you know, so on and so forth. The, the 20 microfarad is 20.207, and then down the line. And so now we're gonna check and see with my meter, my Testo 770-3, and show you what I would suggest doing before you install any capacitor, which is test the capacitor before you install it, and then first test your meter. So the first thing to do, put your meter on the ohm scale, make sure that your leads and your meter are working by touching them together, making sure they ring out and read near zero ohms. So we're good, all right, so I always do that first. On this meter, the capacitance and the uh, ohms or resistance are actually the same part of the meter, so we don't have to we don't have to change it. So let's go ahead and put the keep. We'll keep this in the center, which is the common terminal on this capacitor, and then we'll go around and we'll we'll measure different measurements and see what we get. So this is a 10 microfarad. It always takes a second because your meter has to charge and discharge, and we're reading 10.47. Let's look at the factory. What the factory says, 10.508. I mean, so we're right we're right there. All right, let's read the 20 microfarad one. 20.12, let's see what it says. 20.207, so again, right there, right within what we would expect to see. The 25 microfarad capacitor, 
25.502. So you get the point. When Amaranth writes on their capacitor what the exact values are, they're not playing around. That really is the exact values. All right, so now let's talk about how this actually works. You've got the business reply for registering the warranty. Go ahead and send that in. That's a, it helps them know where their products are going. And then that's also just sort of the way of, of you know, it's, you don't need to do it to register the warranty, but it's a nice way of getting it registered. And also, Amaranth wants to make sure that these are being installed by professional contractors. That's important to them, and that should be important to you as well. So, this shows you how to, how to do this, and it's very, very simple. So, as an example, if you wanted to do a, a 25 by 5 capacitor, well, you wire your fan here, wire your compressor here, and then wire your commons here. Very simply. That would be like a typical uh, capacitor. But let's say you needed to do a 50 by 7.5. Well, now your 5 microfarad, you would connect to a 2.5. That makes 7.5. What it's saying with that sticker at the initial thing is that you want to wire the wire from your fan to the larger of the two. So you'd put your fan on this 5, not on the 2.5. You put your compressor on the 25, not on the 5 or 20. So if it's 50, it's 25 plus 5, that's 30, plus 20, that's 50. Compressor goes here, your two commons go there. So your commons are always connecting here. Connect your fan to the highest of the two. So if you have a uh, 7.5, then you're going to connect 5 and 2.5, and you're going to connect your fan there. If it's just a 5, then you just connect your fan there, common there. If it, with the compressor, let's say we have a 30. A 30, you would connect your compressor to the 25 and put the jumper in over to the 5, and that makes 30. They give you all these nice jumpers. Another thing to note, when AMRADs, do fail, which is extremely rare. They usually fail because the technician didn't make a good connection. So you want to make sure, even with these factory jumpers, that they're nice and snug. And as you can see, these are really, really nice and snug. So if I connected this to this, the 20 to the 25, now I've got a 45 microfarad capacitor, and I would connect my compressor to this terminal right here, and then common to this terminal here. Remember, with, when we say common, we're not saying common to the compressor. We're saying this is the common point that goes back to the run side of the contactor. I can't tell you how many times I've had to tell people that. They always get confused because they think this goes to the C terminal on the compressor. This does not go to the C terminal on the compressor. This right here would go to, again, if we had a 45 microfarad capacitor we're replacing, this right here would go to your start terminal, and then this would go to the same side that feeds your run terminal. It's generally not going to go directly to your run terminal. It's going to go to the same side of the contactor that feeds your run terminal. So don't get that confused, please. When you use the Turbo Mini, they make a oval version of this as well. It's, it's very, very simple. Same, same basic idea. You have your center terminal, which is your common. You have a 7.5, you have a 5, and you have a 2.5. So out of that 7.5, 2, uh, 5, and 2.5, you can make pretty much any common size that you need. 2.5 uh, can also work as a 3. And then the um, five can also work as a four. I mean, it's close enough that it's that it's going to be uh, within tolerance. Um, so if you run into those sorts of circumstances, if you had a five, a four microfarad for some weird reason, you could use the five. And you can see right here it says that on this note can be used to replace the four microfarad. Can be used to replace a three microfarad um, because they, they're usually a little bit on the high side of that rating, um, like on the two point five. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if you check the 2.5, so you can see here this 5 is right on 5 microfarads, and the 2.5 is right on, right on 2.5. So in either of these cases, they would be acceptable to use if you had if you had a three and you needed to use it for that, which is pretty rare. Um, but in most cases, for you know, for a, replacing a five or a seven point five or a ten, this would, this would be a dead on match. So if you used all three of them, you'd have fifteen. If you use the seven point five and the two point five, then you would have ten, so on and so forth. Again, all you have to be able to do is do some math, and it's going to make perfect sense. They also give you a little sticker that you can stick on there and write the installation date. On the larger one, they also give you a marker. So you can write the installation date, you can write your name if you want, whatever you want, so that way you can see if it's under warranty. That's sort of a nice thing to add on, because if, if the next guy comes out and he doesn't know if it's under warranty, that's going to save him some time. 
So a lot of advantages to the Turbo 200s. It saves space on the truck. They also have the Turbo 200X. If you have over a 60 microfarad capacitor, say you're running into a 70 or whatever, I would keep one of the, the Turbo 200Xs on your truck. Um, but really between these those three capacitors, those are all the run capacitors you'll ever need uh, between these three, which makes it a really great option. Again, the reasons why I use this product, the reason why I believe in this product is primarily because it's really well made and it's going to be a great value to your customer for years to come with a great warranty. The other reason is because it saves you a lot of truck stock and a lot of hassle making sure that you have the right things on the truck. I mean, how many times do you go to the supply house not knowing exactly what you need and so you end up grabbing capacitors that you don't necessarily need and then later on finding that you have five of them jammed underneath your shelf. This helps save your truck stock and now you only need to have a couple of each on your truck and you're able to do every different application, which I think is great. In most cases, you're gonna work on a unit that has a failed capacitor, but I wanna just show you, start to finish, how you would replace a capacitor. First step, shut off the disconnect. One thing while we're doing it, personal preference of mine is not to use an impact driver when taking screws out, so that way you don't strip the screws out. Just goes to the center. Again, you got to make sure everything is nice and snug. We have our fan, which goes to our five microfarad right here. Then we have our compressor right here, which goes to the larger of the two values, which is our 25 over here. So now we've got a 35, which is between these two. Our fan is a five, and then we got our common going back. Make sure everything's nice and taut. Yep, in good shape. That's it, let's go ahead and turn it on and make sure that the amperage is good on it, on the compressor, which is always a good final thing to do. On the compressor, and 0.8 amps on the fan. So let's take a look here. Compressor is 10.9 is the rating. So we've got the installation date. Yep, it is the 11th. So we're going to write 6, 11, 18. And we can either turn in the registration card or we can do it online on their website. You can easily register your turbo by going to AmericanRadionic.com forward slash about us forward slash register your turbo or go to AmericanRadionic.com and click register your turbo on the screen. You or the homeowner can easily do this, fill in all the information, and that way it's clear exactly the date that the turbo was installed at the home for the warranty, the five-year warranty. One nice thing about American Radionic is that they start the date from the date of installation and not the date of purchase. All right, so I want to show you this uh, web app. You can use it on your mobile phone, on a computer, whatever you want. Very easy. It's called Turbo200Install.com, and it's just a way for you to find proper wiring instructions for the Turbo 200 line, either the Turbo 200 or if you go to Turbo200XInstall.com, it'll give you the installation wiring instructions for the Turbo 200X. All right, so if you want to find, say, a 35 by 5, that'd be a common one. 35, 5, hit search, there you go. Wire from your compressor, this one goes to Herm. These are your commons that go back to actually the run side of your contactor. And then your wire from your fan, this would traditionally be fan, this would traditionally be Herm, and then this is common. That's how you'd wire it up. And you put your jumper in between 10 and 25, and that makes it 35. Super easy, because you already have a 5, you use the, you use the 5. All right, so now let's try the 
I don't know, something a little bigger. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, 55 by 7.5. See what we get. There you go. So you take the 5, jump it to the 2.5. Now you have 7.5. Now this is your fan. It goes to your fan start winding. This goes to your compressor start winding, what would typically be called Herm. And then all of them in the center are common. And you jumper these together. So you have 25 plus 25, that's 45, plus 10, that's 55. Super simple. Very easy to use. If you want to do the Turbo 200X, they have a link up here to the top right. That's the larger version for larger sizes. Let's say you want a 55 by 7.5, say, on this one. There you go, 55 by 7.5. Let's say you want a 70 by 7.5. There you go. There's a 70 by 7.5. So 7.5 in the fan, 50 plus 20 equals 70. You always hook to the large, you connect your compressor, start winding to the larger reading. So you hook it to the 50, not the 20. It says that right in the install instructions. And then this is your commons. So there you go. If you want an easy, super easy way of remembering how to wire it up without having to call tech support, they say they get a lot of calls. Um, a lot of calls in tech support. Not that I'm making fun of anybody, but it's very simple to do if you, if you, want to you know, just make sure you got it right then just go to turbo 200 install.com or turbo 200 x install.com all right so that's it from hvac school at hvacrschool.com thanks for watching